In this video, my girlfriend gave me over 20 Pokemon eggs to see if I could beat a hardcore egg lock of Pokemon Shield. I have no idea how many of these eggs contain Indy's favourite Pokemon or complete rubbish I've been sent to troll me. I'm gonna really have to hope for some lucky draws here because under my hardcore Nuzlocke rules, if a Pokemon faints, it's considered dead and must be released. The rest of the rules for this run can be seen on screen now and in the description. So let's jump in and see just how viable this run is and if I can beat this hardcore egg lock of Pokemon Shield. So we can immediately start this run and see what our first egg is, and it looks like we're getting Yampa as our starter. We name our Yampa Gunter, and interestingly, I've been given a list of names for our nickname theme for this video, and I don't know what the theme is. Let me know in the comments if you can guess the nickname theme before I get it. No cheating though. Moving on to Route 1, we're able to get our second encounter for the run, and we get ourselves a second Yampa? Wait, what? Maybe if I hatch a third egg here. Okay, one second. Oh, for fuck. Right, after that brief technical difficulty, I've got a new batch of eggs so we can get our second encounter, this time a rock ruff I named Jensen. See if you can spot the common theme between Indy's favourite Pokemon. We then get two more encounters before Motostoke, a Duraludon I named Lauda, and a Gibble I named Fangio. My first Thor encounters are actually really strong, meaning we've started to build up a bit of the team here. We then head off to the wild area, and I've decided I get enough encounters without it, so we'll be ignoring the wild area for the rest of this playthrough. Goodbye ugly ugly trees that make people very upset. With the wild area ignored, we're quickly able to make our way to Motorstoke, and then we get very quickly distracted by fashion. But once we're looking fabulous, we can carry on our team building, and this time we get a Stunky. Stunkies aren't amazing, but they're also not terrible, so I'm sure I'll find some use for her. Heading onto Route 3 then, we find a much less useful encounter, Wolf the Tyrant. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, Tyrant sucks, and luckily I get another encounter in Galar Mine 1 to immediately replace Tyrant, an adorable little Charmander. Now Christian is Indy's favourite Pokemon, so if I let this thing go down, I will be murdered. So the stakes for this run just got a lot more interesting. We then get one more encounter before we make it outside of Galea Mine, an adorable little snom I named Michael. With all that out the way, we can finally get to our first gym fight against Milo. Milo is a grass type trainer, so with Christian, who has evolved into a Charmeleon, and Lauda, the Duraludon, I'm not expecting too much trouble here. I am slightly worried about Milo's Dynamax Elder Gloss, but fingers crossed we pull through. So Milo starts with Glossy Fleur, and I start with Christian. Christian is able to immediately outspeed and do over 50% with an Ember before taking a weak rapid spin. A second Ember then low rolls, allowing the weird looking plant to get off slightly more damage with a magic leaf before going down to a third ember. Second for Milo is Elder Gloss, and Milo immediately Dynamaxes his Cotton Ball, meaning Christian's Ember does next to nothing. A Max Overgrowth then does massive damage to my little Charmeleon, meaning I'm gonna have to switch here. I decide on my Cigarette Lighter, Lauda, who takes a weak Max Strike on the switch. Lauda then has to take a second Max Overgrowth, but she takes the hit well, meaning I've now stalled out the Dynamax. It's then a case of very slowly whittling down Elder Gloss with Metal Claws before taking the KO and winning our first gym badge of the run. Good start. I would also like to interject before our journey continues and remind you if you've been enjoying the video so far, remember to leave a like and subscribe for more content in the future. Oh, and follow me on Twitter for life updates. Like, I've recently got a hamster called Momo. If pictures of Momo aren't worth the follow on social media, I don't know what is. Moving on from our first gym fight and a cheeky self plug, we've actually only got two more encounters before the next gym. The first of which is Morpeko. Morpeko isn't amazing, but Sebastian has actually turned up at a really useful time considering our next gym leader is the water type trainer, Nessa. Unfortunately, our next encounter we get in the town of Holbury is a Wobbuffet. Now I'm sure Oscar could be really useful if I cared enough to work out how to use Counter and Miracle effectively, but I'll be completely straight with you guys, I can't be asked. So let's move on to our second gym battle of the run. Nessa starts with Goldeen and I start with Sebastian. Sebastian starts the fight with a strong Electro Web and then Goldeen just increases its speed 
speed with an agility. This does allow Goldeen to outspeed on the following turn and get off a weak horn attack, but the basic fish then goes down to a second electro web. Second is a slightly faster fish who gets off a weak aqua jet before surviving on 1 HP after taking an electro web. Why can my Pokemon never cleanly one shot? So annoying. It's not a huge issue however, it just means Sebastian has to take a second aqua jet before getting another KO. Last the Nessa is Dreadnought, meaning I've got to stall out 3 tons of Dynamax here. Sebastian is a bit too low to take a hit from this Squirtle knockoff, so I switch into the ever reliable Louder who takes a weak max strike. A Max Geyser then fails to bring my overly large cigarette lighter to below 50% before she's able to get off a breaking swipe that lowers this monster's attack. On the Dreadnought's final turn of Dynamax, Lauda has to take a weak Max Darkness before getting off a second breaking swipe. With that, the Dynamax ends, meaning this has suddenly become a lot less scary. Lauda then has to take a weak Water Gun before getting off a Rock Smash that brings Dreadnought to below 50%. It's then a simple case of sending in Fangio, taking a Razor Shell, and then KOing with a Bulldoze. Pretty easy win, second gym down. It's only going to get more difficult from this point onwards though. Moving on from our second gym fight then, we actually get to have dinner with Chairman Rose. I assume this is the equivalent of having dinner with the president or something. I don't know, I'm just mashing A through the story. I do have one question however, why is he not wearing any trousers? Eventually I'm able to escape whatever the hell that was and make it to Galea Mine too. Really outdoing yourselves with the names of this region game 3. Stupid names aside, we do get a really strong encounter here, a Stuffle I name Mario. Stuffle is super cute and a super strong fighting type, so I'm excited to get to use him. Once we're through Galea Mine 2, we get one more encounter before the next gym, and due to the fact I can't see a use for it other than a doorstop, and I can't even begin to pronounce its name, we're never seeing this thing again. Oh well, can't all be winners I suppose. With that on the way then, we're ready for our third gym fight against the fire leader, Kabu. And I'll be honest, this gym leader scares me. Kabu has three fully evolved and powerful fire types, and has access to a gigantic to max Pokemon, meaning this fight isn't going to be easy. Luckily, I've got some decent counters to his fire types, so let's jump right in. Kabu starts with Ninetales, and I start with Thangio. Ninetales immediately starts the fight by missing a Will-O-Wisp, allowing Thangio to get off a strong Bulldoze. I had given Thangio a Rolzberry, but the longer I can go without using it, the better. Thanks to the speed drop from Bulldoze, Thangio is then able to outspeed on the following turn and KO with a second Bulldoze. Second is Arcanine, who for some reason goes for a bite instead of the Will-O-Wisp that of course then crits. Rough skin damage and a bulldoze from Thangio then do just over 50% and then Thangio high rolls on the following turn KOing the stupid fluffy puppy. Of course when I equip a berry and go in prepared I actually don't get burned, typical. But I can't complain as Kabu is down to his last Pokemon, Center Scorch. I decide Thangio can take at least one hit here so I go through a bulldoze that doesn't do a huge amount and then Center Scorch goes through a max flutterby that leaves my dragon on 1 HP. Jesus, that was way too close. Luckily, my Gabite survives, meaning I'm able to send in Christian, who takes a G-Max Inferno that crits, leaving Christian really low. To make matters worse, Christian is now trapped, meaning I'm gonna have to let him go down here on the following turn. Now, what was it I said about Christian going down when I hatched him from an egg? Now Christian is Indy's favourite Pokemon, so if I let this thing go down, I will be murdered. Yeah, I'm in trouble. Luckily, I've now stalled out the Dynamax, meaning I can send in Jensen, who can one-shot with a Rock Tomb, winning us our third gym badge. Despite the win though, I am worried for my safety, so if I stop uploading in the next few weeks, you guys know why. With Kabu out the way, we're then able to head towards our fourth gym badge. Just gotta mash A our way through some more cutscenes, and yes, Rose still isn't wearing any trousers. We actually only get one more notable encounter before reaching Alistar, and that's a Clefkey I hatch in Hammerlock. Clefkey is a really strong Fairy Steel type who counters a lot of the weaknesses to my team, so Brabham is a welcome addition to my roster. It's then a quick run over to our fourth gym fight. Just gotta do whatever the hell this is. Wee! Okay, that was strange. Alistar time. So Alistair starts with Yammas, and I start with Gunter. Gunter is able to make quick work of the dead child with a single crunch. Second is Mimikyu, so I switch into Lauda. 
On the Switch, Mimikyu starts setting up a home clause, which is slightly scary, but I should be fine, as Lauda has a really high defensive stat. A Shadow Sneak from Mimikyu then does minimal damage, even with an attack boost, before Lauda is able to break the Spooky Boy's disguise with a Metal Claw. Mimikyu is then able to get off a second home clause before going down to a critical hit Metal Claw. Easy. Second is Cursula, who is taken down to below 50% by a single Metal Claw before taking itself out with a curse. Huh, okay, thanks I guess. Last for Alistair is their terrifying Gengar, so I switch into Mario, who tanks a resisted Max Darkness like a champ. That did so little damage, I'm confident that Mario can take at least one more hit here, and then, well, Mario doesn't. I suppose I should have considered their stab non-resisted Max Ooze after a special defense drop would do a lot of damage. Sorry Mario, rest in peace. With Mario down however, I'm 3 to sending Gunter, who very nearly one shots with a crunch before taking a weak max darkness. A second crunch is then able to take down Gengar and win us our fourth gym badge of the run. Shame about Mario, but a win's a win. It's then a short trip to Ball on Lee to get to our fifth gym battle and I've always loved the design of this town, but it's a shame there's so little to it. Just outside of this town, we're able to hatch another egg and get another useful encounter and Aerodactyl I named Lando. Also, with the nickname of Lando, I finally worked out what the nickname theme of this run is. It's F1. Only took me half of the video. With another Pokemon acquired then, it's time for our fifth gym battle. Now, this shouldn't be too difficult, but this old lady is a massive troll, so let's see how this goes. Opal starts with Weezing, and I start with Brabham. I start the fight by setting up a light screen, while Weezing gets off a really weak Fairy Wind. Then, the second element of this fight comes into play, as I have to start answering questions. Depending on if I get the answers right or wrong, my Pokemon will either get a stat drop or a stat increase, so these questions actually do matter. First question is magic user or wizard. I guess magic user as I thought that would fit the whole fairy theming, but apparently I'm wrong. At least I only lose some speed, which isn't an issue as my keys weren't outspeeding much anyway. Weezing then gets off the world's weakest tackle, but even crits, before my set of keys is able to get off a flash cannon for the one shot. Second is Mawile, and no one on my team can handle this thing very well. I decide on Gunther, who should be able to get some really good neutral hits in. On the switch though, Gunther takes a crunch that does over 50% and lowers my defense. That's worrying. I decide to take a risk however, so I stay in and get off a spark that does 50% while Malwile just goes through an iron defense. Second question time, Opal's favorite color. Now call me crazy, but I'm gonna assume it's pink and I'm wrong again. I hate this old lady. With Gunther's defense lowered twice, I'm forced to switch into Jensen as Malwile gets off a crunch. Jensen is then able to get off two more crunches that both get the flinch. I love my rock dog. Unfortunately, thanks to the iron defense, those rock slides aren't enough for the KO, and then a third rock slide brings Malwal into the red before Jensen has to take another crunch. Thankfully, that didn't do too much, and then it's question time. Obviously, I assume the answer is 88, but I've gotten every other question wrong so far, so I pick the joke answer of 16, and apparently I'm correct. Huh. Apparently, being wrong on purpose means I'm right, and I get a 3 attack boost out of it. One last rock slide is then enough to take down the Mawile. Third for Opal is Togekiss, and to no one's surprise, a single rock slide is enough to get another KO. That just leaves the Alcremi, who immediately Gigantamaxes into a massive birthday cake. Thankfully, I've got the TM to protect at this point, meaning that the G-Max final crit doesn't KO my puppy. I'm probably not going to survive another hit here, however, so I switch into my keys on a second G-Max final. A protect on the following turn means I've successfully stalled out the Dynamax, meaning I have to set up a second light screen before KOing with two flash cannons. Fifth gym taken down, and thanks to some luck, we didn't have any real issues. We actually only have one more encounter before the next gym, and this time we get everyone's second favorite sheep Pokemon, Wooloo. It's then time to face the sixth gym leader, Melanie. This gym leader is actually exclusive to Pokemon Shield, and the single reason Shield is the superior game to Sword. Use your imagination to see if you can work out why, I think, she's such a unique um, asset to this game. Right, moving on from my very subtle crush then, let's go win us a gym badge. Melanie starts with Frostmoth, and I start with Jensen. Jensen is able to start the battle with a rock slide that one shots the Icy Moth. Good start. Second is Darmanitan, who would be scary, but thankfully Jensen is able to once again outspeed and one shot with a rock slide. Third is SQ, who is able to survive two extra turns thanks to setting up Hail and its Icy Face ability, but eventually it's taken down in one hit with a rock slide. With that, we're already down 
Mr. Melanie's last Pokemon, Lapras. I've only got Louder, who can resist Lapras's water type attacks, so this might turn into an issue. No choice but to hope and pray though, so I switch into Louder as Lapras becomes very big and lands a G-Max resonance that does a massive amount of damage. No way Louder is taking another hit here, so I switch into my pair of keys, who takes a G-Max resonance much better than Louder did. I then go through a Protect to stop a third G-Max move doing much of anything. That's the G-Max stalled out, so then I spend a turn setting up a light screen as Lapras does minimal damage with an Icy Wind. Icy Wind of course does lower my speed, meaning Brabham does get put to sleep by a Sing on the next turn. That's not an issue however, because I just have to keep going for Flash Cannons until my keys wake up, or Lapras will get a crit with a Surf and KO my little pair of keys. Rest in peace buddy, I'm shocked that Surf, even with a crit, did that much. I'm now in a really awkward spot, as pretty much all of my team will go down to an Ice or Water attack here. I decide on Jensen, who might be able to take at least one hit, so I go through a Rock Slide and get the flinch. That's huge, because on the following turn, Jensen high rolls and KOs with a second rock slide. Jensen is the best puppy, that was insanely clutch, meaning we've won our 6th gym badge. With Melanie out the way, we're able to carry on towards Spikemouth, the most creative town in all of Pokemon is just a single straight line. If that doesn't sum up the issues with this game, I don't know what will. Now, I'd love to say we're now ready for the Pierce fight, but unfortunately, the footage seems to have vanished from all of space and time, possibly because of Pierce's cringy singing. Whatever the reason, I don't actually have the footage to show you this fight, but thankfully, here at Psyduck Spy Studios, we only strive to deliver the highest quality videos, so I've hired a team of expert animators to seamlessly recreate my epic struggle with Piers. So I start with Frostmoth, as Piers starts with Scrafty. After going through a Protect to block Fake Out, Scrafty goes down to two Air Slashes. Second is Malamar, who goes down to a four times effective Struggle Bug. Third is Obstagoon, who has kind of scary stats if I'm honest. Luckily he goes down with no casualties thanks to a combination of body press from Louder and digs from Thangio. Last is Stunk Tank who goes down to a single dig from Thangio. Easy, 7th gym badge down and I bet you forgot you weren't actually watching a real Pokemon battle there. Only the highest quality Pokemon content found right here. We're moving on at a pretty rapid pace here but shockingly we're already at the final gym leader, Raihan. Raihan fights with a sand team in a double battle. Battle. Thankfully, I've got a lot of counters to his team, so this shouldn't be too much of a challenge. Raihan starts with a Flygon and Gigalith, while I start with Michael and Louder. Now, Michael should bait a rock move from Gigalith here, so I go through a Protect. Flygon then goes through a Breaking Swipe, which lowers my Cigarette Lighter's attack, but thankfully, this doesn't do too much as Louder is attacking with his defensive stat, meaning a Body Press I get off into Gigalith does a decent amount. Gigalith then goes through a Rock Blast into the Protect. Perfect. Flygon is then able to get off a second breaking swipe that still doesn't do too much. A second body press then brings Gigalith down into the red before Michael gets off an icy wind that KOs both Gigalith and Flygon. Two down, two to go. Next the right hand is Duraludon and Sanaconda. I immediately switch Michael out for Thangio who has to take a weak max rock fall on the switch. Louder gets off a breaking swipe that doesn't do too much damage but lowers both of my opponent's attack stat. Sanaconda then misses a fire Thang couldn't have really asked for that turn to have gone any better. On the following turn I protect with Louder before Thangio gets off a Bulldoze that does massive damage into both Sanaconda and the Skyscraper. A Max Knuckle then goes into Thangio but luckily it still doesn't do too much. More annoyingly Sanaconda goes through a Glare that paralyzes my Land Shark. I can't go through another Protect with Louder here so I decide to switch into Lando. This lets me safely get off another Bulldoze with Thangio which gets very close to KOing both Sanaconda and Duraludon. Unfortunately, gonna need another turn of attacks here, meaning Thangio has to take a second Max Knuckle, which is starting to stack up in damage, and Sanaconda is able to get off a second Glare that paralyzes Lando. Need to get off one more Bulldoze here, and I win, so I go through a crunch with Lando into the Duraludon and just miss the KO, and then of course, Thangio gets paralyzed. God damn it, so close to ending this. Unfortunately, getting paralyzed means that Duraludon Duraludon is able to get off a really strong breaking swipe that does huge damage, but at the very least he goes down to damage from rough skin. An earth power 
brings Tangio even lower, but he survives. That just got a bit close there. I'm then able to end this fight by switching into Jensen, who takes an Earth Power, and then KO the Sanaconda with two more crunches. That's the last gym leader taken down, a bit too close there at the end, but we pulled through, meaning we've got our last gym badge. We're nearly at the end of this game then, just got a couple things to clear up before we reach our final hurdles. Firstly, we play the worst game of hide and seek ever, before then getting a really weird out of place slideshow showing us Rose has got new trousers. I assume him gaining trousers is part of his villain origin story, but I'll be honest, I still haven't really been paying attention. We're then at the finals for this game, so let's see who we're bringing. Thangio, the vicious Garchomp, Jensen, the rock solid Lycan Rock, Michael, the elegant Throssmoth, Lauda, the towering Duraludon, Lando, the prehistoric Aerodactyl, and last but not least, Gunter, the good boy Boltund. Let's go win this. First up, we've got the semi-final matches against Bead and Hop, and both Bead and Hop are weenies, so I'm not about to start showing their fights after skipping them all video. So let's move right on to the finals. First up is Nessa, who is much more exciting than Bead. Bead. Nessa starts with Glycopod, and I start with Michael. Glycopod starts a fight with a first impression that does huge damage before Michael is able to get off an air slash that at least does 50% before activating emergency exit, forcing out Pelipper. With Pelipper out, my best bet is Jensen. Just gotta hope that this Thatsed Eagle doesn't go through a tailwind on the switch, of course. That's now awkward, as I'm gonna be risking a crit water pulse taking down my rock dog, but I have to stay in, and luckily it doesn't crit, meaning Jensen survives and gets off a Thunder Fang for the KO. Bit risky there but it paid off as I now have Jensen out, meaning that when the Glycopod comes back out, can finish it off with a Thunder Fang. Third Vanessa is her speedy fish Barracuda, so I switch into Lauda who takes a drill run on the switch. A second drill run brings Lauda really low, but thankfully she survives and gets off a breaking swipe that lowers this fish's attack. With this speedy fish's attack lowered, I'm safe to switch into Lando on a drill run and then take a strong liquidation before KOing with a rock slide. Fourth is Seeking, so I switch into Gunter on a strong waterfall before outspeeding on the following turn and KOing with a Thunder Fang. That just leaves Nessa's Ace Dreadnought, meaning I'm gonna need to stall out a Gigantamax here. I start by going through a Protect on a Max Darkness. I then switch into Thangio on a weak Max Rockfall before going through a Dig on the following turn that allows me to stall out the Dynamax and then KO the overly large Turtle. Easy. Got a bit dicey in the middle of that fight, but we pulled through. Up next is our rematch match with Alistair, who starts with a Duskanor, while I start with Lando. Lando starts the fight with a strong crunch that does over 50%, but fails to get the KO, meaning Lando has to take a hard thunder punch to the face. On the following turn, a second crunch is then enough for our first KO. Second is Cursula, who just goes down to another crunch. Easy. Third is Chandelier, who just hangs on after taking a strong crunch and then lands a Will-O-Wisp. That's annoying, but I know Alistair will use a Thor Restore on the following turn, so I might as well stay in and get off some more damage with another crunch. And much to my surprise, Alistair doesn't heal, allowing Lando to pick up another KO. Not gonna pretend I understand why the AI did did that, but not gonna complain. Up next to Alistair is Poltegeist, so I switch into Michael on a Shadow Ball. I then have a long back and forth trying to lower this Teapot's special attack while it keeps increasing its special attack with Nasty Plot. Unfortunately, the Teapot is able to raise its stats quicker than I can lower it, meaning eventually I'm forced to switch into Gunter on a really strong Shadow Ball. No puppy luckily survives though, meaning I'm then able to outspeed and KO with a Thunder Fang. Last for Alistair is Gengar, so I switch switch into Lauda as Gengar Gigantamaxes and gets off the G-Max Terror. G-Max Terror does a massive amount and leaves my cigarette lighter on 2 HP. Unfortunately, G-Max Terror means I can't switch, and that means despite Lauda surviving, I have no choice but to let him go down on the following turn. Rest in peace, Duraludon. You carried me through a lot of this game and you won't be forgotten. I've now got one more turn of Dynamax to stall out, so I send in Thangio and go through a Protect. A G-Max Terror then does minimal damage, meaning I've pretty much won as my land shark is able to outspeed on the following turn and KO with a dig. Difficult fight and we've lost a valuable member of my team, but we made it through. Our final rematch is against Raihan and this fight shouldn't be as difficult as his first fight as Raihan's team is built around three different types of weather, giving us lots of opportunities to pick up KOs. So Raihan starts with Torkoal and I start with Jensen. Torkoal is pretty tanky, but a single rock slide is able to one-shot the turtle. Second is Flygon, 
so I switch into Michael as Slygon sets up a sandstorm. Michael has to take a dragon claw that does over 50%, but she's then able to hit back with an icy wind that gets the KO. Third, the Raihan is one of the ugliest looking Pokemon in existence, so I switch back into Jensen. On the switch, Jensen takes a weak fire blast that annoyingly burns. A rock slide then doesn't KO on the following turn, thanks to the burn, but Raihan wastes his extra turn by setting up the sun. A second rock slide then takes out the ugly looking fire type. For the Raihan is Gudra, so I switch into Thangio as Gudra sets up the rain. Gotta love getting so many three switches thanks to Raihan's crazy weather team. With Thangio out, I'm able to outspeed on the following turn and KO with a Dragon Claw. Last, the Raihan is Duraludon, so I start stalling out Dynamax by going through a Protect. Thanks to the Protect, the G-Max depletion does next to nothing. I then switch into Lando, hoping through another G-Max depletion, but unfortunately, Duraludon goes for a max steel spike, which KOs my dinosaur. Rest in peace, buddy. Your sacrifice will get us through this fight. With Lando down, I'm able to switch into Gunter and get off the charm, which makes the max rock fall my zappy puppy has to take do minimal damage. I then switch back into Thangio as the G-Max ends, taking a weak body press on the switch. A single dig plus rough skin damage is then enough for the KO, taking down Raihan's last Pokemon. We've done it, we'd only have the champion to go, but unfortunately Rose decides to try and end the world for some reason, meaning we'd better go save it before we get to our final match. Saving the world doesn't prove to be too difficult however, even if Rose plays some pretty dramatic music while we battle. Rose's Excavalier, Kling Clang, Therathorn all go down to a single flamethrower each, then it's just a case of stalling out the Elephant's Dynamax with double, and then using the real Thangio to one shot with a dig. Easy. Just a ghost to show, even with trousers and dramatic music, Rose is as threatening as a wet fart. It's then a simple case of watching Leon fluff up a one ball HG capture before beating up an Eldritch Horror. Who knew saving the world was so easy? With that brief interruption out the way, it all comes down to this. Me and my team of random eggy boys versus Leon and his unbeatable Charizard. Let's do this. So I start with Stunk Tank and Leon starts with Aegislash. I start the fight with a Protect, hoping to bring Aegislash out of its defensive form, and I get lucky as Aegislash tries to go through a Flash Cat. That's perfect as a single priority Sucker Punch can then KO on the following turn. Second, the Leon is Haxorus, and this is probably Leon's most threatening Pokemon. I decide walling this monster out with my Fluffy Sheep and doing as much damage as I can is probably my best bet, so I send in my Fluffy Sheep and take an Earthquake on the switch. A second Earthquake on the following turn brings my sheep to below 50%, but thankfully an equipped Citrus Berry brings my sheep back to above 50%. I'm then able to get off a Thunder Wave. A Body Press then does low damage before the Haxorus gets paralyzed. Perfect. A second Body Press brings Haxorus down to 50% as another Earthquake very nearly takes down my sheep. Unfortunately, I am going to have to let my sheep go down here, so I stay in and get off a Double Edge that annoyingly just misses the KO before my fluffy boy goes down to a final earthquake. Rest in peace, you weren't around very long, but you held your own. With my sheep down, I have no choice but to send in Michael. Michael would be in a lot of trouble here, but I know Leon will heal on the next turn, so I'm safe to go through an icy wind that does over 50% and lower this Haxorus's speed. So on the next turn, I'm three to outspeed and KO, right? Well, unfortunately no, because somehow, even with the speed drop, Haxorus still outspeeds my moth and KOs with an iron tail. Rest in peace, Michael. My mistake got you killed. I'm really shocked Haxorus outsped there. I guess either Thrustmoth is slower than I think, or Haxorus is faster than I thought. Either way, with Haxorus around 50%, I'm able to send in Gunter, who KOs with a play rough. Third for Leon is Seismitoad, who is actually really awkward for my remaining team members. I decide on Thangio, who is still all around my heaviest hitter. On the switch, my Land Shark takes an Earthquake that thankfully doesn't do over 50%. I then hit back with a Dragon Claw that doesn't do as much as I was hoping for, unfortunately. Then the dumb looking Toad lands a Toxic, putting my Land Shark on a timer. Thankfully, another Dragon Claw brings Seismitoad down into the red before Thangio takes another Earthquake that does a massive amount. I might have just lost my Dragon to Toxic damage, but a Citrus Berry keeps her in the game. One last Dragon Claw is then enough to take down the Toad. Fourth, the Leon is Dragon Pult, and much to my distress, I have no choice here but to let my Land Shark go down, so I salute as my Sharky Boy goes down to a Dragon Breath. Rest in peace, buddy, you are the MVP. In revenge for his fallen comrade, Stunk Tank is able to come in and revenge kill the Dragon Pult with 
with two sucker punches after taking a flamethrower. Fifth for Leon is Cinderace, so I'm going to have to let another one of my Pokemon go down here. So I stay in and watch as my stinky stunk takes a flaming football to the face after getting off a sucker punch. That just leaves me with two good boys left and luckily that's all I need to win. Gunter is able to come in and finish off the Cinderace with a Thunder Fang. That just leaves Leon's unbeatable Charizard and my puppies are eager to take this thing down and win us the championship. My electric puppy immediately proves his determination by nearly one-shotting the Gigantamax beast with a Thunder Fang. Charizard survives the attack but can only hit back with a max rockfall that hurts but doesn't take down my puppy. That means on the following turn a second Thunder Fang is enough to bring down Leon's ace and win us our Pokemon Shield Egglock. That's it, we've done it, we lost a lot of good friends along the way, but at the end, Leon was no match for our good puppy boys. I hope you all enjoyed the video, it was fairly different from any run I've done before, and I'd be so up for doing more egg locks in the future. So show your support on this video by leaving a like and subscribing for more in the future. Thanks again for watching everyone, I'll see you all next time.